It's completely shocking to see all of these people here crossing from Central Asia, from China, from Turkey, from all over the world. It's very unusual for this area. Man, life in the West is hard. I know a few brothers from Africa that said that they've never experienced depression before, despite how difficult life was for them in their respective, their respective countries. But now that they live in the Western countries, it's hard to deal with. You know what I mean? The thing is, as hard as you think life is in the West, there are people in poorer countries desperate to trade lives with us. There are people desperately crossing seas, borders, traveling for months at a time, leaving their families behind in search of a better life. And they are coming here. They are coming to these Western countries where we live. You know what I mean? So we live in these countries and we have the things that people in poorer countries are literally dying to have. Yet we are depressed, anxious, and unmotivated. Why is that? You know, I won't lie to you. Um, <laughs> the moment I can figure out how to make money without having to be in the Western countries, I will find somewhere else to live. You know, passport bros ain't the only ones. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be one of them as well. My reasoning is because to make a livable wage in Canada, it's hard. And just as hard as you make that money, it disappears faster due to all the bills that you have to pay. You know, some people are barely on top of things because any change in interest rates to their mortgages and it puts a strain on their abilities to live comfortably. There are questions tonight about how effective new federal mortgage guidelines will be at keeping Canadians in their homes. Ottawa unveiled it last week. J.P. Tasker looks at what they are and whether they'll help in the face of high interest rates. Bikram Deep Singh has a mortgage renewal looming on his Vancouver area townhome. Right now I'm looking at the renewal rates somewhere between 6 and the 6.5%. So that's going to be like bringing my payments uh, 30 to 40 percent up. So that's going to be a significant chunk of money that I'll be spending every month. Singh was already just trying to keep his head above water. I'm the sole income earner in my family, so that definitely puts some stress. You know, that is that is something that is is important to to talk about, right? Because I think the way things are done in third world con- th- third world countries is that the man goes to work the woman stays home with the kids right she takes care of the household while he goes out and hustles and brings money back for the family but in the western countries (laughs) it is very difficult for everybody in that house to just live off of one person sometimes it just requires two people to go to work and help out because in this case like he's probably going to lose his house can't pay his mortgage because he's taking on that load all by himself sometimes it just it just means you got to stop doing things the traditional way because we're living in the west there's nothing traditional about living in the west all right let's keep going About 2.2 million mortgages are up for renewal in the next two years, according to federal data. Those households will be paying a lot more with record low rates in the rearview mirror. Kevin Larkin doesn't think he can keep his Surrey, B.C. home on a teacher's salary. You know, I've just been running the numbers and I don't see how I'm going to be able to to renew and, and afford this. Finance Minister Christia Freeland says Ottawa is doing what it can to avoid a spike in foreclosures. I want Canadians to get through this. I want Canadians to be able to afford their mortgages and keep their homes. That's where the government's new mortgage charter comes in. A series of guidelines for... Honestly, just saying I want, I want, I want Canadians to be able to live and afford and pay their mortgages isn't going to cut it. (laughs) A lot more would probably need to be done than just saying I want. Right? 
put things in, in, in practice that helps to prevent people from losing their homes that they've worked so hard for, that they are proud of, right? That's an achievement that they're proud to have achieved and it can be lost so easily just because interest rates are doing a yo-yo dance right now. And that's, that's not okay. You know, I mean, I'm not, it, honestly, it is what it is, to be honest, man, because life is going to life, right? And, and things are just going to be what they are. We just got to understand it and, and move differently. Banks, including allowing temporary extensions of amortization periods so people can take longer to pay and exempting homeowners from a stress test when switching lenders at renewal. Most banks were doing many of these things. You know, this real big estate big watcher big says a charter won't change much. Right People are already offloading properties they can't afford, and it could get worse. And if rates That's stay right. in the sixes for another 12 months, uh, yeah, we're going to have potentially and very likely some downward pressure on prices. I mean, something's going to break. The good news is inflation seems to have stabilized. The bad news, interest rates might not go down as fast as they went up. The governor of the Bank of Canada has warned people should prepare to live with higher rates for longer. J.P. Tasker, CBC News, Ottawa. Yeah, the problem is like when things break down in the home. You know, you got a furnace that is not working. You got a hot water tank that's not working. You need to replace them. Those things cost money. And on top of your utility bills that also are expensive out here in this part of the world, then, you know, when those things hit, like your car, <laughs> your car breaks down, all of these things, when they, when they come, it could knock you off balance, right? Because... The interest rate is not the only thing you got to worry about. Now, groceries are also being higher. When you go to the store, it's like the price changes so often that it's hard, it's hard to keep up these days. It's hard to manage your bank account. In, in a, in a, your bank account's not friendly towards you. <laughs> your bank account's hostile. It's like <laughs> it's trying to take you down, and you're, like, you're, you're just trying to maneuver yourself in a way that you can still keep your bank account smiling, but geez, it's hard. Let's keep going, man. The skyrocketing cost of living is difficult for both people who've lived in Canada for a long time and for newcomers. That means some people who chose to move to this country are now making other plans. CTV's Jumi Ogun Shola reports tonight on the difficult decisions some immigrants are now making to leave. Walking along the seawall, Malika Azizi appears to have a great life. But there's something on her mind. I'm sad even thinking about it, but like, it's a kind of must thing I feel now. Azizi arrived in Vancouver from Iran six years ago, but now she's seriously considering packing it up and moving on. Every move that we want to make, the first and the only thing about is money. But there's more. I was an architect back in my home country. I went through the certifications. But now, Azizi is an intern architect. By the end of this year, Canada will have welcomed more than 450,000 new permanent residents, like Azizi, with some form of foreign work experience. BC absorbs an estimated 20% of those numbers each year. But the system makes it difficult for most newcomers to transfer their foreign experience. A recent report is now highlighting a growing problem. Onward migration from Canada has jumped 31% in recent years. Aziz's story is not unique. Jack Strange moved to Vancouver from the UK about two years ago. He was very excited about the life ahead until he wasn't. I was skipping meals, basically, because I was struggling to afford my, my food and my rent. He is now back home. So where is the Canadian dream for newcomers? Coming to Canada, purchasing a home, raising their families here, and that's definitely been brought into question. The number of people leaving Canada is pale in comparison to those arriving, but over time it adds up. We're going to continue to experience these, um, these issues with filling the labour needs. For many, including Malika Azizi, their Canadian dream is now neatly parked into their suitcase, waiting for the onward journey. It's just sad. I think I wasted my life, kind of. Jimmy Ogunchala, CTV News. You know, the, the problem is, as well is that when life gets to be that difficult, 
it's hard for people to smile at you, be honest with you, or not just put themselves first. You know, it's hard for people not to be angry when you cut them off on the road because the life's challenges just keeps compounding on them and stress just keeps building because there's so much to worry about. There's so much to lose. So much is at stake. You know, you you have to, there's so much so many hurdles. Like for her, she has a degree from her country, but she can't work with that. Now she's got to do more in order to be at the same level that she was before in her country. I mean, I'm not saying it's 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 unfair, but those are the challenges that people face when you move into a country such as Canada and you're expecting a certain lifestyle to come with it. But what you get is more challenges. Yeah, it's tough. It is a lot of juggling. It is quite overwhelming at times. I am working on my teaching assistant job and second cup and the cat cafe and also trying to focus on my course and my research. All of her jobs are part time and the number of hours she works varies each week. Sarkar says she often doesn't know how much money she'll earn and if she'll be able to pay rent or afford to eat. I find it very hard to get out of bed. The thought of Having to do so many things just sort of paralyzes me. Sarkar is among a growing number of precarious workers in Canada. About one in five Canadian workers have precarious jobs right now. And to the pandemic, the housing shortage and inflation have all led to an increase in precarious jobs. The insecurity impacts most vulnerable groups a lot more than the average person. And that's why we're seeing the explosion in precarious work, the explosion in people having to pick up a second or a third job. If rent and inflation remain this high, Sarkar says she'll have to find a more affordable place to complete her degree. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't blame her. Right? Canada is not the only place. And being in the Western countries, it's not the only option for y'all. And I mean, for people in those poor countries who are dying, dying to leave their countries and to move to the Western countries. It's not easy. <laughs> It is not easy to live in the Western countries. I'm going to tell you that. For my, for my experience being uh, in, in Canada, I learned that when you cross over the border and you get into Canada, say goodbye to, to being part of a community. You will have to do it alone, right? Because there are so many people that smile in your face and... They probably have good intentions of being your friend, but the thing is, everyone's busy. Life here is fast, right? If you don't put in the effort to try to balance your life out here, <laughs> it, it could overwhelm you because it, you will, it, it seems like you are doing it on your own. I mean, if you're used to uh, life, life from a country where it feels like there's more of a community behind you, you're not going to feel the same way here. It'll feel like you are doing it on your own, you know, and that's, that's part of the, part of the struggle as well. Right. But, um, yeah, having to do three jobs and then study as well is, is tough, man. There's, there's no time for anything else. All you're doing is live to, to work. And that, that's hard. And this is the life that a lot more people, are struggling to get to. All right. <laughs> we got to keep it going, right? Life life goes on. So we got to we got to keep it going. Anyways, I don't I don't know what the message is in this video. What is the takeaway message? If this is you, if this expresses your lifestyle, what you're dealing with, hang in there. Keep looking for ways to better yourself. And better your situations, you know. Hopefully, things improve, right? Hopefully, these interest rates come come back down, and make it easier for us. But you know what? I'm out of here, y'all, and I will see you on the next video. Take it easy. Have a good night. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe, and talk to me in the comment sections. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.